If you can't hear me, let me know. And I'll shout louder. Hang on, took your toes. Hey, um, thanks for coming today. I want to talk about more about financial stuff. People don't know because it's a bit confusing. So I want to make it as simple as I can. Is that okay? Cool. So most of the TPPA sets rules on non-trade matters that affect our daily lives. Food safety, internet freedom, medicine costs. You've heard about these already. What you don't hear about is about the potential effects on New Zealand's financial regulation. Talking about fiscal policy just is not sexy. And they make it sound so complicated so everyone just switches off. That's part of, the, that's part of modus operandi. So I'll try and make it as simple as I can and just spend five minutes covering the big points. We could talk all day on how our financial situation here in New Zealand will be changed by the TPPA, but I'm not going to do that because you'll all leave. <laughs> so this is one of the most dangerous parts of the agreement, as well as all the other stuff that Christian's been talking about as well. So Tim Gross, the Minister of Trade, has said many times, New Zealand would lose its sovereignty. Our domestic policy will then be largely governed, not even by the governments of other countries, but by the giant multinational corporations who have already been shown to care more for profits than for people. Certainly not for the truth, the environment, or even the long term. The TPPA would lock in a rigged set of economic rules lasting potentially forever. Has anyone here been concerned or affected by the global financial crisis? Anyone? Yeah. Okay. Well, the TPPA could affect the New Zealand's regulations needed to avoid future financial crises. And that's already happening if you're watching the, the alternative news. They're already talking about a new global crisis. The TPP would provide big banks with a backdoor means of rolling back efforts to regulate investment banking in the wake of the global economic crisis. In other words, the same people who got us into a financial mess would be the same people who would be allowed to control our financial well-being in the future. Does that suit anyone here? Anyone? No. <laughs> the TPP would require domestic law to conform to the model of extreme deregulation that caused the crisis overseas. New Zealand was protected somewhat due to the different legislation that we have. All that would change as the TPP would forbid countries from banning risky financial products, such as the toxic derivatives that led to the 800 and one, sorry, 183 billion government bailout of the IAG in the states. The TPP would require, uh, sorry, whoo. the TPP would threaten the use of firewalls, which are policies that are employed to stop the risk, the spread of risk between different types of financial institutions and products. It would ban financial control, uh, capital controls, an essential policy tool to counter destabilizing flows of speculative money. Any further deregulation of the already weakened, regulated and increasingly powerful financial industry would fuel fi future financial crises. These people have enormous amounts of money. They can do whatever they like with it. The TPP would pro prohibit taxes. Oh, too close. The TPP would prohibit taxes on financial speculation. No hope of passing proposals such as the Robin Hood tax which would tamp down speculation fuel volatility, volatility while generating millions of revenue, dollars of revenue for social, health or environmental causes. And if our government ever gets around to monetary reform, yay, and takes away private banks' privilege to create our money out of thin air and instead giving them to the role of intermediary between saver and borrower, borrower the banks will make a lot less money. That alone is reason enough for them to sue the government for loss of expected earnings. So if you think the banks earned Three billion overseas banks earned three billion dollars profit a year and took it overseas from New Zealand last year. That's seven hundred dollars for every man, woman, and child profit that they are making out of New Zealand and shipping overseas. That's a continuous, endless drain of our wealth. So we can't use that money for something else. There are a number of current financial problems that we experience in New Zealand that will be disastrous under this TPP. The introduction in the early, early 1980s of the freedom to move capital around the world without regard to national governments or national interests was one of the greatest blows struck by international cap capital against elected governments. It meant that international corporations could blackmail governments into doing whatever they wanted. And that usually means lower taxes for them, not for us, big tax concessions for them, weaker labour laws, easy repatriation of profits, lower health and safety standards, and all the rest that you know about. All under threat if we don't comply because we'll be starved of investment. 
This has meant a huge proportion of our assets has been sold off into foreign ownership. So the current estimate of overseas ownership of New Zealand uh, productive land is 10%. That's 10% of our farms, forests, is owned by overseas interests. The unrestricted movement of capital encourages uh, irresponsible behaviour by investors. They can just up and leave if anything goes wrong, usually after stripping assets of any value they have and leaving worthless shells behind. We've seen that. Under new rules, foreign investors will respond to any attempt to limit their ability to buy up what they want, or their demands for unreasonable terms as the price for selling, or their freedom to ignore New Zealand standards of behaviour in, in respect of employees or local investors by threatening to take the New Zealand government to specially cons constituted tribunals which can force our government to comply. Most dangerously of all, if we ever wanted to protect our currency against speculators or take other action to fend off a financial crisis, as example um, Malaysia did by limiting the movement of capital, we would find that a TPPA makes that illegal for us. We would have no ability to protect ourselves financially. So we have to ask, are ministers and bureaucrats who sign trade deals that compromise or destroy our sovereignty guilty of treason? Has this government been elected to serve the interests of Kiwis or of foreign investors? I say to Tim Grocer, John Key and the national government, don't walk away from this deal. Run. Run as fast as you can and as far as you can or history will be trying you for treason. Run! Treason against their own country, our country, our Aotearoa. TPPA or democracy? TPPA or democracy?